In this video, we'll take a look at the DeskPy Lite case for the Raspberry Pi 4. This low-cost but impressive case provides access to the micro SD card, two USB ports, and a power button on the front. On the back, you have two full-size HDMI ports, which is a welcome touch. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I'd like to say a big thank you to the folks at DeskPy for sending this case over for review. While I didn't pay for the DeskPy Lite case shown here, all opinions are my own. DeskPy hasn't seen the review before it was made public, and I'll let you know what I like and what I think can be improved in future models. That said, let's dive in. First things first, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, such as this one. This particular case did not have one included. There are different models, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Looking at the manual, the instructions are very clear, with the exception of one little piece, which I'll point out when we get to the assembly process. In addition, you may need a power supply, micro SD card, HDMI cables, and all that kind of stuff. There are eight screws that are pre-installed when you get it, so you'll have to remove those in order to open the case. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick, and I'll speed through it. With all the screws removed, we'll find a few additional components needed inside to assemble the DeskPy Lite case. The first is what I would consider the expansion board. This board includes two full-size HDMI ports, an AV jack, two additional USB ports at the front of the case, and the main power button. Another very important component to this case is the fan assembly, and this one is rather unique. It includes a connector which slides over the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 4, and provides a pass-through connector that allows access to all the GPIO pins. Additionally, inside the case are some thermal pads and some screws. I first determined where the thermal pads fit best over each of the four chips. There are a few extra pads, so don't be concerned with that. There is protective plastic on both the bottom and the top of each pad, which needs to be removed. The pads aren't very sticky, so lay them out and place the fan over the pads to secure them in place. Then you want to take the two small screws that were included in the same package as the thermal pads and secure the fan, as shown here. Once everything is secured, this is what the assembly looks like. Looks pretty cool. You see your GPIO pins there sticking out the back. Now we'll take the expansion board, and starting with the AV jack connector, we'll just gently slide it into the side of the Raspberry Pi 4 connectors. A gentle side-to-side -side motion should help in securing all the connectors, and this is what it looks like. The manual I received didn't mention this small LED cover, so I initially missed this step. Before we install the Pi 4 and expansion board, place this small piece into the slot at the front of the case. Then I found if you position the GPIO pins up towards the right, everything pretty much just slides right into place and that little cover will be held in by the Pi 4 itself, so all is good. You'll find a small notch on the bottom of the case. Go ahead and line that up over the micro SD slot, and now it's simply a matter of just installing the eight screws. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once all the screws have been tightened down, it looks like we're in pretty good shape here. I'll go ahead and pinpoint all the locations where the screws go, just for your reference. And let's take a brief look at the GPIO port. There's one thing I noticed here. There is no notch at the top of the connector for the ribbon cable. So unless you have a cable that has no notch, the only way I was able to install the GPIO cable was upside down, which will change the pinouts for a cobbler such as this one. While not at all recommended, I had no other cable to use, so I cut the notch off and was able to plug it in so the red pin 1 was on the right. I then ran this Python program to blink an LED to make sure it worked, and it did. May not be a big deal, but wanted to share my experience. Looking at the back of the case, you have your USB-C for power, your two full-size HDMI ports, your AV jack, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and your gigabit Ethernet. On the side, you have access to your GPIO pins, as we've already touched on. It's pretty cool that it includes that cover. Here we have your micro SD slot on the front of the case, your LED indicators, two additional USB 2.0 ports, and of course your power button. 
Of course, what you decide to install on your Pi or DeskPi light case is totally up to you. If you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi4, you'll find a number of videos and content to assist. For example, perhaps you want to experiment with Windows 11 on the Pi, or check out the DeskPi Pro, which includes support for M.2 SSDs built into the case. Or you may want to try out a bunch of different operating systems using Pin Lite. One of my favorites is Twister OS, so I'll be using that as an example for the setup in this video. After downloading and extracting the archive for Twister OS, I used Raspberry Pi Imager to burn the image to the micro SD card. If you're unfamiliar with how to do that, no worries. I documented those steps for you on the common guide here. Just click the link to the section for burning an image with Raspberry Pi Imager, and it'll step you through the process. I'll demonstrate how not to install the micro SD card into the case. Yeah, don't set it like this. Damn it. Now i got to remove all eight screws again. <laughs> yeah, don't do it that way. Instead, lay the case upside down and gently slide the micro SD card into the slot to prevent the same from happening to you. Taking a look at the DeskPi.com product page, you'll find there are a number of variants of this case. The one I'm showing here sells for $30 and includes no additional accessories. However, there are variants which include cards, adapters, and even the Pi 4 itself. About six months prior, I reviewed the DeskPi Pro case, so I thought it fitting to show you the two side by side here. The DeskPi Pro is larger, with room for an M.2 drive and an aluminum shell, while the DeskPi Lite is plastic with a bit more ventilation. Since the case I received didn't have a power supply, I'm going to go ahead and use one of these Kinekit power supplies at 5.1 volts, 3.5 amps, and go ahead and plug in the HDMI cable and the USB-C cable for power, and then we'll move on to the software aspects of the DeskPi Lite case. You can use any keyboard or mouse that you wish. I'll demonstrate using the official Pi keyboard and mouse plugged into the front port of the DeskPi Lite case. However, once Twister OS is booted up, you can see that they don't work. So for now, I'll move them to the back USB ports and show you how to fix this issue after a quick initial setup. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and launch the Raspberry Pi configuration and then move on over to the localization tab and set our Wi-Fi country and we'll just click the drop down here and select in my case United States and click OK and then I'll go ahead and check my time zone and that's fine I'll go ahead and click OK and go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network which is Lucas and go ahead and enter my Wi-Fi password Click Next, and this is what's really cool about Twister OS. There's a ton of different themes available to you. You can make your Raspberry Pi look like Windows 95, XP, 7, 10, 11, a Mac, <laughs> all kinds of different, different themes that are available. I'll go ahead and select the iTwister Sir dark theme and enter the password of Raspberry, and voila, that's what it looks like. Anyway, let's get back to the issue that we were having with the two front USB ports not working. We'll open up a shell window, and then we'll simply do a directory listing of DIR, and we need to actually move to the boot directory, so I'm going to change the directory to boot, and take a look here, and what we see is the config.txt file, which we need to modify. So at this point, I will type in sudo nano, config.txt which will load the text editor and then we need to insert at the very bottom dt overlay equals dwc2 comma dr underscore mode equals host then I'll press control x and y and enter and it will save the file now I'm going to type sudo reboot maybe there we go <laughs> and we'll go ahead and reboot the Pi now at this point the front two USB ports should be operational and again, they're 2.0 ports, and there we go. The mouse is working, keyboard's working, everything's good. And while we're talking about themes, I'm going to go ahead and show you just real quickly a few of the themes available to you in Twister OS. This is the iTwister theme, which is somewhat of a Mac OS look. This is the Twister XP look, 
which is pretty neat. Looks like Windows XP. Even sounds like Windows XP when it boots. And here we'll take a look at Twister 10, which kind of looks like Windows 10. I'll use this particular theme throughout the rest of the video. In the next segment, I'll show you three different ways you can configure the fan to work with this case. If you want to keep things very simple, you can move the switch on the board to E or Always On, or D for Software Controlled. I'm going to leave it at D throughout the rest of this video, and using method 2, you can go into Recipe Config and set the fan to come on when the CPU temperature exceeds a specified threshold. This section explains how to do that, but I'll quickly demonstrate it here. I'll open up a shell and type sudo recipe config, recipe dash config, and press enter. And from there, we'll move on down to performance options and press enter. And from there, move down to fan. We'll press enter on yes. And 14 is the GPIO pin. And we'll go ahead and set the degrees to 60 degrees. And that's when our fan will turn on. We'll hit OK and press Enter. And then go ahead and exit out. And once we do that, it'll ask if we want to reboot. We'll go ahead and hit Enter and the machine will be rebooted. The third and more flexible option may be found on the DeskPy GitHub page. I'll put a link down below which can be used to set the fan speed at varying strengths depending on the CPU temperature that has been exceeded. For example, we'll change the directory to the home directory and then run this git clone command, which will bring down the source code. We'll go to the despy subdirectory, set the permissions, and go ahead and run the installation script. Once the installation script has completed, the machine will reboot. From here, we can open up another terminal window and type in despy-config. Then we'll take option number six and follow the prompts here. I'm going to go ahead and use the default values that they suggest and go ahead and once complete on the last one, the configuration will be saved. So out of the three methods shown, it's up to you how you want to utilize the fan active cooling. Method one is the easiest to a little bit more control. And the third method is the most configurable. That said, I'm going to use method number three in the last steps that we performed and run a stress test here. I'll place the commands used in the description below. On the left hand side, I have the task manager running so you can see that the CPU is running at 100% utilization. The commands issued will stress the CPU for about 15 minutes and report the current temperature every 10 seconds. During this test, the CPU did hit 65.2 degrees Celsius early on, the fans kicked in, and then the temperature dropped down to 56.9 degrees Celsius by the time the test completed. You can of course tweak the settings however you wish. From what I'm seeing, the DeskPy Lite does a good job of keeping your Raspberry Pi 4 cool. And here we're at the end of the test, and you can see the temperature did drop to 56.9 degrees. One thing that wasn't included was a script to perform a safe shutdown. So I contacted DeskPy and they provided this preliminary Python script, which does work pretty good. After launching, a double tap on the power button will safely shut down the Pi completely. If I find out any additional information on an update, I'll be sure and edit below. While the DeskPy light case does not include an internal slot for an SSD, an external SSD, such as this one, work just fine off the USB 3.0 port. You can also pick up the DeskPy Pro if you prefer the SSD to be internal to the case. I like that the micro SD slot is on the front of the case and that you have access to two additional USB 2.0 ports as well as the power button, which is easily accessible on the front as well. There is plenty of ventilation and the integrated cooling fan works well. The GPIO not having a notch may be a minor inconvenience for some. I do appreciate having two full-size HDMI ports as this is something missing on some cases I've reviewed. All in all, it would be hard to find a better case at this price point. I hope you found this video helpful. Please comment below and let me know what you like or what should be improved. Thank you for watching and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.